Hey there, AQR students. So here we go. This is the last lesson. SAS 9, Understanding Credit Card Debt. All right. So here's the problem. JR owes $9,000 on a credit card charging a 16.8% annual percentage rate, APR. Uh, he stopped using the card and has a debt plan to pay $319.97 per month to pay off the balance in 36 months. Okay, so he's going to roughly pay $320 a month for three years, and that will wipe out his credit card debt. Okay, we're hoping anyway. So, number one says create an amortization table for the 36 months of JR's debt plan. So here's what we're going to do here. We are going to go to your computers, and maybe you're watching this video on the computer, but you're going to want to go to Google Sheets, okay? So I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do, and eventually you're going to share this thing with me. So we're going to do all this in Google Sheets. All right, so here, I'm clearly at Google here, and if I click on the little squares up here, I can see Google Sheets is in here somewhere. Here's Google Sheets. I'm going to click on Google Sheets, and it's going to take me to spreadsheets. And I want a blank spreadsheet, so I'm going to hit blank. Okay. So here is our blank spreadsheet that we're going to use to create an amortization table. So what an amortization table does is it gives a breakdown of a loan that you are paying off. All right. Uh, primarily, you, see, you hear about amortization tables when someone purchases a house. You buy a house. You're going to be paying on it for years and years and years, and you can create, a lot of times you'll be given an amortization table to show you exactly how much of each payment you make goes as interest and how much goes as principal, all right? And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but let's first, let's kind of set up our columns here. So in the, underneath A, in the first column, we are going to put months, okay? Or month, I'm going to make it singular. Month, but if you want to put months, I'm fine with that. Okay, second column, if you want it tab, it'll move it to the right for you. I'm going to put old balance. This is our balance at the beginning of each month. The tab go to the next one. This is going to be our interest column. So interest is money that we're paying to the credit card company. This is not money that goes toward your paying down your balance. All right. The interest, in this case, goes to whoever gave us the credit card, gave JR the credit card. Next is principal, P-A-L principal, principal. And the last column here is going to be new balance. And then one more thing I want you to type, and I want you to type your name in here. Okay? I want you to type your name in that column F. All right, I'm going to hit enter. That should take me back over to column A, the second line. And underneath month, I'm going to put one underneath month, and then right under, I'm going to hit enter and put in two. Okay, so I've got one and two. I want a number all the way down to 36, but, and if you want a number just by hand, you can do that. A lot easier, though. I'm going to put my box on number one here. I'm going to hold the shift key down. Hold the shift down and press the down arrow so that it highlights both one and two. This will save you a little bit of time here. So put the cursor on one, highlight the one box, hold the shift key down, press the down arrow. So you, you've now highlighted both one and two. And now I'm going to grab this little bottom box thing. You see that little square in the bottom right by the two? Oops, I lost my, lost my thing here. All right, see the little box by the two? If I put the cursor over there, it will change into like a plus sign. See there? It's an arrow, and then all of a sudden it becomes a plus. Once it becomes a plus, I'm going to click and drag it down. I'm going to click and hold it, and I'm just going to drag down. And I have to go all the way down to line to 37 on the left-hand side to get 30, so it goes up to 36. So if I you can see that I've gone, to my little dash line there is at below 37. And when I let go, I have 1 through 36 here. Okay. Up the top is 1. 
all numbers all the way down to 36. And this will always work as long as you set up some kind of pattern. It can see that I was doing a patterns by ones. If I put two and then four and then highlighted those and gone down, it would have gone two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, it's kind of a cool thing that spreadsheets do. Okay, so our balance to start with, let's go to old balance here. Our balance to start with that he owes, that, that JR owes, is $9,000. So I'm going to put in $9,000 here. All right. Next is interest. The interest he's paying 16.8% per year. But this is just one month. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I'm right, this is going to be equal to, I press the equal sign because I'm going to put a formula in here. So I say equals 16.8%. When I move the decimal over, that is 0.168. All right, so equals 0.168. I want to divide that by 12 because this is one month out of the year. So we're taking that 16.8%, we're dividing by 12 to get a monthly percent. And now I'm gonna multiply that times this old balance. So I'm gonna say times, I'm gonna use shift eight is that asterisk, that means times. And I'm gonna click on the box here where the 9,000 is, which is, and so it'll show up as B2 here, meaning it's box B2. So it's gonna take 0.168 divided by 12 and multiply by whatever is in B2, which in this case is 9,000. If I press enter, it will take that formula and it changes it to 126. All right, so this is, let me stop for just a second here. Notice this is just 9,126, but we're talking about money here. And it'd be nice if, if we could see that it was money. So we're gonna format these columns. So I'm gonna click on the B up at the top here hold the shift key down and I'm gonna hit the right arrow and highlight C, D, and E, and then I'm gonna let the shift off. So I've highlighted those four columns. I don't wanna highlight A because I don't want that to look like money. Those are just month numbers. So see this little dollar sign right above here that I'm highlighting with my finger, the finger cursor here? That says format as currency, and that's what I want. I want to format this as money. It will automatically round everything to two decimals for us. It'll put dollar signs, it'll put commas. It'll make it look just a whole lot nicer. All right, so that's kind of nice. Now we have $9,000 and $126. So of that first month payment that JR makes, $126 is going to go into the pocket of the credit card. The rest of the money that he pays will go to decrease his balance. So let's figure out, that's called the principal. The principal is the amount that goes to decrease the balance. So to figure out what the principal is, I'm gonna say again, I'm gonna say equals, inside I'm gonna make a formula, equals. And I want to, it's suggesting a formula for me, but I don't wanna use that. What I wanna do is his payment is 319.97, 319.97. And I wanna subtract whatever the interest for that month is. And in this case, it was 126. So I'm just gonna click on this box where the 126 is, and it'll, every time it's gonna take that payment of 319.97, and it's gonna subtract whatever's in C2. And again, I'm gonna press Enter to lock in that formula. Notice if I go back up to where this is, it still stays 19397, but I can see the formula is up here in the little F of X bar. Okay, up here, it says 319.97 minus C2. All right, last column, I need a new balance. So I'm gonna take the 9,000, so I'm gonna put equals to start my formula off. I'm gonna click on the box where the 9,000 is, and I'm going to subtract my principal. It does not, the interest going to the credit card company, the principal is coming off the balance. So I'm gonna do B2 minus D2, I'm gonna press enter. And that's the new balance. As of at the end of the month, JR now only owes $8,806.03 because of that $193.97 that came off. All right? Okay. So I want to copy this line down. If I copy it as is, if I take, if I, for example, I highlight the 9,000, I'm going to hold down the shift, go over a few columns here. All right, if I copy this line straight down, just I'm just gonna copy down one line here. Notice it gives me the exact same thing. 
The problem is with the 9,000. I want this 9,000 in month two. The old balance in month two will be what the new balance was in month one. I want B3 here. I'm going to change that 9,000. I'll say this is, should be equal to, and I want it to be equal to this amount right here, this new balance. I don't want to do that. Let me get rid of that. Equals this right here, this 880603. So equals E2, and that's all I need for that. I just want the new balance here to become the old balance at the beginning of the next month. Press enter, and notice everything has changed here. All right, so now 8806 at the beginning of the month, the interest is, went down a little bit, the principal went up a little bit, and then the new balance is now about $8,600. It was $8,800, now it's $8,600, because we're taking off roughly $200 a month here. Not quite, but pretty close to $200 a month. Okay, so now this line should copy down. Okay, let, let's try it. Let's copy. I'm going to highlight the 880603. I'm going to hold down the shift and hit the right arrow until I highlight the 8609. Let's just copy down one month and see how it looks. Oops, it went two months, but that's okay. Notice my old balance is continuing to decrease by about $200 a month. My new balance over here, down by 200. The principal keeps increasing a little bit. The interest keeps on decreasing a little bit. The reason for that is, remember that interest is a percent times your old balance, and the old balance keeps going down, so the interest goes down. As the interest goes down, that means since the principal is composed of a combination of interest and principal, all right, I mean, excuse me, since, since your payment is made of interest plus principal, if your interest decreases, the principal will have to e increase to, in order to, so that they add up to three nineteen ninety seven every month. Okay, so print, so all these these the interest will continue to go down, the principal will continue to go up, and so I'm going to just take this last line and I'm going to copy it all the way down until my numbers by the months end up, and it should be that it should be pretty close to zero by the time we get to the bottom here. All right, so we'll stop it at 36 here, and there we go. And you can see at the last month, 44 cents there. Okay, so I does not quite pay it off in 36 months, but you're so close that we can just add on that 44 cents on the last payment. All right, so that's how we make an amortization table. I hope that was clear. Now we're going to make a graph. Number two says. Graph the principal and interest portions as separate bar graphs for the 36 months. All right, so we're going to do principal first. I'm going to high, I'm just going to press the D up here above principal, and it's going to highlight that entire column. And then I'm going to insert a chart. So I'll go to insert, and this very first thing here says chart. And it'll take a moment. And there we go. It inserted a chart. Now this is not a chart. I don't want this chart. I want a bar I want a bar graph. This is a line graph. So over here to the right, I have a chart editor, and where it says line chart, I'm going to change this to bar chart. See the column chart here. All right. So I'm going to use the column chart here. Click on that, and now I've got a column chart. Okay. I'm going to close this thing off. It's a little bit bigger than I want. I'm going to downsize this a little bit. So I click on the chart and, and I'm going to grab, you know, this upper right hand corner to keep it my per perspective about the same. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to use my left, my arrows to kind of move it. And I'm going to put it over here so I'm not covering up my columns. It really it doesn't have to be any particular size, but do make it so you're not covering up your columns. And I'm going to shift it up so it's just right under my name. Be sure you can still see your name there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I've got principal. Now we're going to do the same thing for interest. In fact, I'm going to let y'all do that. You're going to highlight interest. You're going to insert. You're going to do your chart. Resize it. And just place it right here underneath. Okay, put it right underneath your principal. Try to make it about the same size as the principal. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty close, you know. And what you'll see, the principal increases over time. Your interest is going to decrease over time. It'll be going down. It'll look like this, but going down. 
Okay, in fact, it should be like a mirror image of this almost, except it's going to go down close to zero. Okay, um, once you've done that, for your turning this in, share it with me. All right, you've got a share button up here. Click on the share button. You can title it if you want. In fact, you might just title it SAS9. Let's do that. I'm going to title it SAS9. Save it. All right, and I'm going to share it with share it with me. So that's going to be Craig Thornton at RobinsonK12.tx.us. Okay. C R A I G dot T H O R N T O N. Spell my name right, or else it's not going to get to me. Okay. Uh, if you prefer to send me the link, that's fine too. You can copy the link and just email it to me, or send it to me as a Schoology message. Anyway, you can get to me, but somehow I need to be able to see this so I can give you credit. Okay. All right, that's it. We're done. Um, I will hopefully will see many of you at graduation on June 12th. Uh, if I don't see you, I wish you all good luck. I hope you have a great summer. I hope you have those going off to college. I hope you have a great time in college. If not too good. Be sure you do your work. And um, that's it. Goodbye.